Hello, this is Presh Talwalkar, and I'm going to teach you how to solve the Rubik's Cube. In the first video, I'm going to explain how you solve the cube by cheating. This is not so you actually cheat, but it's to explain the anatomy of the cube. In the videos to follow, I'm going to explain the move notation, and then I'm going to explain the layer method in which you solve the cube layer by layer by solving the first layer, then the middle layer, and then the final layer. The Rubik's Cube is a 3D puzzle, and it's one of the best-selling toys of all time. There are six faces with different colors. You can move the cube around and move the colors around. And what makes the Rubik's Cube such an interesting problem is that even after a few moves, the colors get mixed up quite thoroughly. What makes it frustrating is that when you try and put the cube back together, if you don't know what you're doing, it seems like the cube only gets mixed up more. So in dire frustration, you might be tempted to cheat, and that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to take the cube apart and then reassemble the pieces in their correct positions. Now a few words of caution, I don't recommend doing this. As you can see, it's actually frustrating. Sometimes it's not that easy to do. The other problem is that it's going to take us nearly 10 minutes to take it apart and then put it back together. If instead you follow the instructions in the videos that follow, you'll be able to solve the cube in just a couple minutes and it'll be far more impressive than if you cheated. All right, once I have one piece that's wedged out, I'm going to slowly remove the rest of the pieces and take the Rubik's Cube apart. I'm going to do this slowly because it's very easy to lose a piece in this process or they'll fly everywhere. But the reason I'm doing this, it's not just to cheat and get to a solved position because I know how to solve the cube. But the point is I want to show you the anatomy or the skeleton of the Rubik's Cube. There are six faces which have different colors. And these faces, what's important is that they do not move. These pieces are completely fixed. And the point of solving the Rubik's Cube is you want to move the remaining pieces to match them. So the white face will always be opposite the yellow face. The orange face will be opposite the red, and the blue face and green faces will be opposite each other. So you might be able to rotate the pieces, but they'll never be able to move into other positions. Now before I put the cube back together, I'm going to sort the pieces. You can think about this like solving a jigsaw puzzle where you separate the pieces into corner pieces, edge pieces, and middle pieces. For the Rubik's Cube, there's a similar grouping that we're going to use. Some of the pieces will have white on them, which means they're going to have to match the white center face, and we know those pieces can all be put in a group. Other pieces will be yellow, and that means they'll have to go on the side that's opposite the white face where there's a yellow center. Some of the pieces will neither have white nor yellow and those pieces will go in the center. There's one further subdivision of the pieces which is some of the pieces will be corner pieces which will have three colors on them and some of them will be edge pieces which just have two colors. So I've sorted the pieces into five piles that have four pieces each. And now we're going to solve, we're going to explain how the layer method works to solve the puzzle. The first step is we're going to look at the white center, the white face, and we're going to make a cross. So we're going to look at the edge pieces and we want to match the edge pieces which have two colors 
to the to the sides to the other center pieces which don't move. So here we have an orange and white edge piece, and it has to go in that position to match the white, orange, and white sides. Similarly, the next side has green and white. And we're going to keep going around the rest of the layer. So we put the red and white edge piece in position. And finally, we put the blue and white edge piece in position. And at this time, we've solved the white cross. The next step in the layer method will be to solve for the corner pieces of the white layer. So there are four corner pieces, and we're going to find the group of corner pieces which have the white corners. So here we have an orange and white and green side. So there's one corner which has these colors and we put it in the correct orientation. Then we have a corner which is green, red, and white. We find that corner and put it in the correct orientation as well. As you can see, while I'm putting the cube back together, there are some difficulties. So that's another problem with this method of cheating. All right, we put in the red, blue, and white, and now it's getting kind of hard to hold this together, but we only have one corner to go, and that's the blue, orange, and white corner. So now we put... Oh, it's falling apart. We'll put it back together. All right, so now we've solved one layer of the cube. So all of these pieces are in the correct position. And they match... Not only is the white all of the pieces on the white side white, but they also match the center pieces for the colors of the other side. And that's very important. The next step in the layer method will be to solve for the middle layer. So there are four pieces which have two colors each, and we're going to want to match the sides of the two colors. So we get the group of pieces there are four of them. Here we want to match a green and orange edge piece in the middle layer. So we'll find that piece and then put it in the correct orientation. We'll continue going around the middle layer. We want to match an orange and blue piece in the correct orientation. We'll continue matching a blue and red piece. And finally, we have a red and green piece. So once we put that piece into place, we have solved the second layer. And now we have two layers completely solved. We have the bottom layer and the middle layer. We only have one more layer to solve, which is the yellow side. And we're going to solve that by creating a cross. So we'll go ahead and match the edge pieces, which have yellow on one side, and match it to the color of the other side. We're going to go around the rest of this layer and put in the remaining edge pieces. When we actually solve the videos for the top layer, we're going to do it slightly differently. We're going to create this yellow cross without regard to matching the other sides. But then we're going to show you how you can move these pieces around. So ultimately you will create a yellow cross where all of the edge pieces match the center pieces of 
the sides. So we just have one more piece, which is the blue and yellow piece. It becomes harder to start putting these pieces in as all the other pieces are in the cube. But I'm going to go ahead and try and snap this into place. And all right, I've actually made a mistake here. I've put it upside down. And if you, if you do make a mistake like that while putting the cube back together, it's very important that you put it in the correct position. And the reason is that if you flip one of the pieces, it actually puts the cube in an unsolvable position. So go ahead and fix that. And that's one problem if, if you take apart the cube, you could put it back together in the wrong way. All right, finally we have four corners and we're going to match the correct colors and put all of these four corners into place. So as it's becoming physically harder to snap the pieces in, it will also be a little bit harder mechanically to solve the cube as we get more and more pieces because there's we want to move these pieces around without messing up the rest of the cube. But once you get it finally done, you put the last piece in and you will have a solved cube. So that's how you cheat at solving the Rubik's Cube. And in the remaining videos, I'll show you how you can solve the cube the right way by learning specific move combinations to move the edge and corner pieces around. I hope you liked this video. Please click through to watch the next video which explains the move notation. Please subscribe to my channel. You can support me on Patreon to get exclusive rewards. Catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, on Twitter at Presh Talwalker, and you can get my books listed on my website.